Right, so today marks World Hypertension Day. This day is set to raise awareness and promote hypertension prevention, detection, and a controlled launch. High blood pressure is said to be the main risk factor to develop cardiovascular disease, where more than 1 billion people around the world live with hypertension or high blood pressure, which is a major cause of cardiovascular disease and premature death worldwide. So to take this discussion further, we're going to be joined by Zoom by cardiologist, Dr. Ngoba Tzabedze. Um, a very good afternoon to Dr. Thank you for your time here on the SABC. Good afternoon and thank you for having me and good afternoon to your listeners. Just reading some stats uh, globally, particularly in South Africa as well. Um, one in three adults living with high blood pressure, it's responsible for one in every two strokes. These seem to be alarming stats at this point. So as we mark the World Hypertension uh, Day today, walk us through the realities and the severity of this disease in South African context. Yeah, so in South Africa, unfortunately, we don't have um, excellent epidemiological data that tells us up to date how many people in the country live with hypertension. But data from the World Health Organization suggests approximately 30% in sub-Saharan Africa live with hypertension. So in South Africa, that translates to approximately 20 million people if we have a population of about 60 million people. So that's, that's a third. Um, it is the most significant comorbidity that drives cardiovascular disease, as you've said. And uh, simply by treating it optimally, we can reduce many of the end organ manifestations, such as, as you said, stroke. We can reduce that by 30 percent. Heart failure, we can induce by, reduce by 28 percent. And even all-cause mortality by up to 13 percent just by simply treating patients with high blood pressure and uh, decreasing um, the millimeters of mercury by at least 10, the systolic blood pressure. So mm -hmm. it is a, a very common and a very poorly treated condition in our area. The theme this year emerged, uh, measure your blood pressure accurately, control it, live longer. There's also a correlation with um, ditching the salt for the sake of our hearts. Perhaps you could speak to that relationship between salt and hypertension. Perhaps also the legislation around sodium intake in South Africa. Yeah, so there's a very clear correlation that uh, increased salt consumption um, leads to early onset hypertension and also resistant hypertension, which is difficult to control. Importantly for individuals, this does not necessarily translate to table salt because most of the salt intake that we consume is actually in processed meats products uh, as well as, uh, uh, as um, uh, ingredients that are used to preserve products. And so anything that contains uh, the element of sodium, um, whether it's sodium chloride, typically for salt, or other sodium compound, sodium-based compounds, all of these lead to increased salt intake, and this then accelerates and leads to um, early incidence of hypertension and difficult uh, to control hypertension. So definitely a reduction of salt intake um, would definitely help in reducing and treating or at least reducing the prevalence at a population level. Mm. Furthermore, uh, in terms of legislation, although uh, we know that uh, there is uh, guidance for many manufacturers to use less salt, um, the issues always comes with in terms of policing and ensuring that um, manufacturers of processed foods uh, preservatives are comply with the current recommended um, um, levels that should be should be utilized. And again, um, should they be found to have uh, not complied, what are the consequences thereof? So most of the time, um, the average South African will find um, affordable food um, that usually has high salt content simply because the manufacturers have found it easier to just produce their products that way. And uh, again, we just need more policing. And if individuals or companies are found to be violating these, uh, perhaps to have consequences. Yeah, um, um, you're speaking to perhaps also harnessing the uh, be behavioral economics to encourage screening, to mitigate against um, some of the risks associated to hypertension as well. Perhaps we could look at that so that we can increase the rate of screenings in South Africa. Um, perhaps also look at um, the risks associated for um, hypertension and, and how this economically um, burdens the country, its healthcare system at large. Great. 
So uh, hypertension falls part of a group of conditions called non-communicable uh, diseases. It's one of the major risk factors. Other conditions that sit there are conditions like diabetes, uh, cancers also sit there as well. Uh, dyslipidemia, high cholesterol is also one of those conditions. And uh, it's by far the most common comorbidity uh, from non-communicable diseases. And a simple strategy of screening, as you've said, which is really measuring blood pressure. We're currently in May. This is globally part of the a com a global campaign called May Measurement Month. A simple activity such as screening uh, and knowing your numbers um, would be a powerful tool to alert people and the public at large to check and to know what, what their blood pressure is. And because this condition um, is silent, there's no generally no symptoms until you, you effectively manifest with end organ damage or complicate with end organ damage, um, that may be the first time you realize. And that means by you either complicating with a stroke, having a heart attack, having kidney disease or even manifesting with heart signs and symptoms of heart failure. And it's easy to screen individuals and treat them early and optimally. But once they complicate with these organ damage conditions, these are usually requiring uh, specialized care, which is very, very expensive, such as dialysis for patients with chronic kidney disease or end-stage renal disease, um, heart failure therapy, coronary angiograms for those who have atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, that's blocked arteries of the heart. And even with stroke, um, the burden of stroke, once one has that, they become usually disabled. They need to now uh, have occupational therapies to re-engineer their livelihoods in terms of how they now cope. So looking at the healthcare cost globally, it's much an easier intervention to actually screen and treat optimally uh, than not doing that early and then waiting for patients to actually complicate at a much later stage, which then uh, brings on a very large uh, burden of disease. Um, doctor, just very quickly, with a spotlight on primary health care um, at large in South Africa, is South Africa's healthcare system fully equipped to manage and deal with patients suffering from hypertension, even cardiovascular diseases? Just very con uh, quickly in conclusion. So there's definitely room for improvement. Um, we know that many of the therapies that we have to treat hypertension and cardiovascular disease are traditional therapies. There's a lot of advancements in these therapies. And the biggest barrier to access them, especially in the uh, public health care system, is usually a lack of cost effectivity data analyses to show that these therapies work and it's actually cost effective and saving money to the entire healthcare budget by actually implementing. This includes simple strategies such as utilizing uh, single pill combinations where instead of having individual tablets for hypertension, we could have one tablet which, which has two or three tablets in it. And this would improve compliance at a greater length. Uh, again, uh, a basic equipment like um, a 24 hour ambulatory blood pressure machines, um, having various cuff sizes, all of these basic resources are things that many um, uh, uh, primary healthcare facilities need to, to improve on in order to adequately diagnose and treat this condition. Uh, Dr. Ngoba, thank you for your time here on the SABC for weighing in on uh, the importance of um, monitoring your blood pressure. This is the world that commemorates and looks uh, into World Hypertension Day. Dr. Ngoba um, Chabetze is a cardiologist joining us uh, via Zoom and weighing in on that conversation. Thank you, Jane, for his time.